di- if you wouldn't mind directing your question to whoever yeah, you want so, to answer Yeah, um, so The Moral Landscape, I really like that book, and I think my question's relevant as far as science pertains to Enlightenment values, but my question is for the Weinstein brothers. So, not to put you under the spotlight, Sam, but do you agree with Sam's book in terms of can we reason our way out of Hume's is a distinction and can <clears throat> science solve normative claims? I would just broaden that to science being rational thinking generally, not white lab coated science. Yeah. Um, I'd be happy to take a crack at it. You want to start? <laughs> I'll go, I'll, let's, let's try to do it super fast. Yep. Um, basically, the, the big issue with is ought to me is, is that when you define human flourishing, uh, you always have the possibility that you're, the, the human species is different. It's not going to be uh, like any other species that can wake up and decide that anything constitutes human flourishing. And so there is some sort of Chomskyan pre-grammar of something like archetype or religion, in my opinion, that has to do with making sure that the brain doesn't start just focusing on its own pleasure. The idea that the purpose of life is to be happy is a very dangerous idea, and I disagree slightly with Sam in that uh, he says that the best ideas should out, and the problem is is that the fittest ideas will tend to outcompete the best ideas if the best is meaning the most rational and truthful. And sometimes you have an idea that is fit or an idea that is self-extinguishing. So you have to think about is and ought having to do that morality comes ultimately from the ability to outcompete others, which seems very strange. We think of morality in different terms. But the big danger is, is that our bodies have to mediate a system of soma and germ, the part of us that goes on as lineage and the part of us that is expendable and will never recur. And in this system, you have proximate goals and ultimate goals. Ultimate goals have to do with preservation. Proximate goals have to do with like discomfort, so thirst for dehydration and hunger for lack of nutrition. And so the great danger is, is that the brain wakes up and starts taking care of its proximate goals without, and unhooks them from the ultimate goal. So I think that in general, is ought, to me, comes out of an evolutionary theory of systems of selective pressures, and it tends to be a Chomskyan pre-grammar that keeps the brain from focusing on pleasure as an ultimate end and, and defining that to be human flourishing, which would be catastrophic for the preservation of the species. Okay, <laughs> um, Brett, you could you could talk for three hours about no, no, the subject. No, no, very very different answer, and I think relatively short. I actually disagree Did with that Sam that you can uh, that you can ground the ought part of the equation in pure science and logic. You cannot even ground a claim that being alive is better than being dead. There's no defense for that claim. Now, it happens that everybody in this room will agree that being alive is better than being dead because of selection. In other words, those who didn't believe it didn't leave so many descendants, and those who did left descendants, and so you've all inherited that fiction. So, in any case, my point would be you cannot establish these claims scientifically, but that's not a big deal because we can actually agree on the values that make sense in light of our particular evolutionary delusions and proceed from there pretty easily. So I'm not worried about the fact that you can't ground it, but no, you can't. Okay, well, I, just, just as, a, as a brief response, I think we're talking past each other a little bit, but you can't, you can't ground the, the axioms of science scientifically either. Right. You have to pull yourself up by your bootstraps in physics and in math and in logic At and in morality. At the very bottom, you have to yes. have a little bit of faith, actually. Yes. Well, it's just, it's just there's, there's something that's axiomatic that it's fundamental enough to your thinking about in that domain that it need not be justified, and there's no place to stand that's more rudimentary from which you can doubt that proposition. Right, and so my, my, my fa- foundational moral proposition is the worst possible misery for everyone is bad. And that anything that's, that, that, is, that is better than the worst possible misery for everyone is a place worth, it is, it, a movement away from the, the worst possible misery for everyone is, is good. Even though it's better. not true, you yes. can get all of us but, to agree to yes. it. I much okay. admire what you smuggled in there, <coughs> Brett. By Do you? Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Did anyone notice that? <laughs> uh, hey, sly, your brother. <laughs> yeah. 
Go for 